this is what we'll be making today. It's a hot pad for a large Pyrex dish. Instead of putting two or three underneath one Pyrex dish, we're gonna make one, just like that. And we'll show you how it's done. Stay tuned. Now let's get started with what items we'll need for this project. We'll need the top fabric. You can use one sheet of fabric big enough to cover the bottom of that pan, or you can use strips. I have strips from a previous project that I would like to use, so I'm using these. I'm going to sew these strips together to form the top, and I'm going to use this piece as my back. The pan itself is a 9 by 13, so we're going to need at least that large, and I prefer to get a little bit larger. So this piece here is the pan is 9 by 13, so this is 11 by 16. So I've cut that to size. I've cut some Insel Bright to size. Insel Bright is, this is what it is, it's batting to go inside of, it's designed inside of pot holders and oven mitts, and it is to keep the heat in. So you need a sheet of that inside there. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. Don't worry about getting it. You can use batting. I also use a thin sheet of batting in with this. So you can use this and a thin sheet of batting, or you can use two thin sheets of batting in your pot holder. So if you don't have Insulbrite, don't, don't fret. You're not gonna have to put it in a microwave or anything anyway, so you can use these. It doesn't really matter. It's just, I had this on hand, I'm using this. And then this is leftover strip batting from a quilt I had worked on, so I'm using this. This is leftover fabric, I'm using this. You could use whatever, you can use one big sheet, you can use pieces. Perfect for strip uh, pieces that are left over from another quilt. So let's go to the sewing machine and we'll finish up there. Now we've moved over to the sewing machine and we're gonna take our strips and we're gonna sew them right sides together with a quarter inch seam down the side. You can pin them if you like. If you feel more comfortable doing that, by all means, pin it. But I am just sewing mine and lining it up as I go along. If you'll just feed it through until you get to the end, and then we'll attach the other strips. two strips sewn together, I'm going to press them open. You can't see me pressing too good, but that's what I'm doing. Pressed it open. Then I've already taken three strips and sewn them together, so I'm just going to sew these to probably this side. with a quarter inch seam allowance. If pinning it makes you more comfortable, then by all means pin it. Again, you can use one straight piece of fabric if you don't feel like sewing these strips together. I just had these left over and I wanted to use them. So then I'm going to press open the other side and then I'll see you back for the next step. Now I'm going to sandwich my hot pad together with my top of it upside down so the wrong side is facing. I'm going to layer a layer of Insel Bright and a layer of batting, and then my backing. And this is what I'm gonna sew together. And to make it easier to sew, I'm gonna spray a little adhesive to it. I'm using the 505 
to make it stick together. Now, when you're using this, you want to make sure to not get it anywhere else because it's a mess to clean up. So I'm going to tack it down like that on one side, move it away from my machine, tack it on that side, and that's going to make it easier for me to sew it. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same. You don't need much of it. You don't even have to use it. Some people do, some people don't, but I'm using it to make it easier so all my pieces stay together. And now we're ready to sew it. With the quilting of this project, you can get creative or you can just do it simple. Mine is just gonna be simple. I'm just gonna stitch down these rows where the seams are in straight lines. It doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just trying to get the pot holder put together so we can use it. So I'm doing straight lines. You do whatever design you want to do. You can do it on a big machine, a quilt machine, or you can do it on your sewing machine. I'm doing it on the sewing machine so I can show y'all how to do it on here. I'm just going to do that all the way down these seams. And then we're ready to bind it. Makes for a quick little project and a great, great Christmas gift. go ahead and do more decorative designs through here or stitch it the other way as well you can do any kind of stitching on this but I'm fine with it just like this so I'm leaving it like this and now we're ready to bind it you'll need to square this up before you start the binding process and I just cut off the strips off the edge to make it straight edges Okay, we're over at the iron now. We've got our iron hot. We've got our binding face down on the ironing board. Wrong side up. So we're going to fold it in half. And with the hot iron, we're going to go all the way down this binding. And we're just going to keep doing this until we get to the other end of this binding. And this was two and a half inch strip when we made it. And we're sewing it in half. No, excuse me, we're <laughs> ironing it in half. Can't get my words right to get today. So we're gonna go all the way down this. And then we're gonna come back and attach our binding. Okay, we're ready to sew our binding on. I'm gonna take the binding. I'm gonna lay it on one side of the item that we're making, which is the pot holder, And I'm gonna pin it down. I want about this much left open, maybe four inches or so. Not exactly, but just about that much so that I can attach it later on when I come to the end of it. Then I'm gonna bring it over to the machine and I'm gonna go right below that pin mark and I'm gonna start sewing a quarter inch all the way to the edge of the pot holder. And I've attached it to the back just because that's the way I do it so that when I come to the front, I won't have a, a seam line showing. When I get to the edge, I'm gonna go almost to the edge of this and I'm gonna clip my thread. Some people don't clip their thread at this point. They just pull it out and put it back. I like to clip mine, it's up to you. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it at an angle like that. Then I'm gonna put my fingers there and I'm gonna flip it back, put my fingers there and hold it 
so that it's just like that. We'll do it again at the next corner so you can see it again. Then I'm gonna go all the way from the edge here. I stopped a quarter inch going down this way. On this edge, I'm gonna start from the very beginning. And I'm gonna sew this all the way down at a quarter inch. I'm gonna stop at a quarter inch. I back stitch it a couple times, you don't have to. Then I'm gonna pull it out, cut it. Let me show you here again. After I drop my scissors. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it 45 degree angle, just like that. Put my fingers on the edge, flip it back Put my fingers on the edge, hold it down. Now it's ready to go down this side. I'm gonna go all the way from the edge. And I'm gonna sew down a quarter inch again. a few locking stitches in to go back and lock it in. Take it out, cut it, do this again. I'm going to take this binding piece, I'm going to fold it at a 90 degree angle, put my fingers there, fold it back. Now we're ready to go down this side. I'm gonna hold it really good while I move it so it doesn't move. Sew it from the edge all the way down at quarter inch. Stop about a quarter inch out from the edge. Cut it again. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take this piece Fold it over, fold it back. Then I'm gonna take it to the machine. Sew from the edge. I'm not gonna sew much because I'm already here where we started. So let me take it out and show you what I'm talking about. I'm just taking it out now so you can see where we're, what we're at. I've got all this excess strip you don't have to cut it right there i'm just trying to show you so you've got these two pieces you're trying to join here okay that's the piece that we cut i'm gonna trim off that end piece so i've got this piece and this piece i'm trying to join i'm going to lay this one down i've got an other another piece of bad the binding that I used for a different project. I'm gonna open it up. I know I cut that at two and a half inches because that's what my typical binding is, is two and a half inches. So I know this is two and a half inches wide. And I know this binding was two and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna lay that flat, the piece that we started with. I'm gonna lay a, just a sample little piece of fabric that I cut off for this purpose because I know it's two and a half inches I'm gonna lay it sideways because I know from here to here is two and a half inches and that's what I need. So I'm gonna take this one and lay it on top of it. Now I know from here to here is two and a half inches. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut at the end of that white piece and throw that away or use it in a strip quilt, crumb quilt. So I'm going to take this piece here and join it to this piece. I knew this was two and a half inches. That's why I needed two and a half inches overlay here. So I'm done with this piece until the next time I do binding. So now I need to join these two pieces. 
I'm gonna take this pin out. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna pin them up just for the sheer purpose of trying to get to these other two pieces easily. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna open this one up and I'm gonna lay them right sides together. We're just trying to join these two pieces. And I'm gonna pin this one because it's gonna wanna wiggle. So I'm pinning it right there. And I'm gonna sew from here to here, diagonally across to these two points from finger to finger. So I'm taking it over the machine. I'm gonna sew from corner to corner. You can draw a line if you're more comfortable with that, but I've done it enough to I don't need to draw that line. But if you are more comfortable with it, by all means, it's not gonna hurt anything. Then I'm going to cut this. I've got this flap here that I wanna get rid of because I don't wanna create bulk. So I'm gonna cut it about a quarter inch away from that seam that I just sewed in there. Now I'm gonna take this pin out and you'll see why we did all this. Because when I open it up now, my binding is perfect size. It takes all the mess and the, my words are not right today. I'm gonna take all the math and the guesswork out of it. Now I'm gonna come back to where I had stopped sewing a minute ago and I'm gonna go back about an inch. And I'm gonna sew this down. locked it in place and now my binding is done on this side so I'm gonna flip it over to the other side I'm gonna cut any excess string just to get it out of my way thread whatever if you're like me you will have a lot of these throw those away take the binding from the back roll it to the front bring it back over to the sewing machine and you should be at about a quarter inch and you're just going to start sewing it down. When I get to the corner, I'll show you what we do. There's some strings I missed. We'll probably find more along the way. I'm going to take it out just for a minute to show you what I got to do now. And then we'll start back. This corner is kind of bulky. So I'm going to take not the back, but the front part and cut it along the edge there to get some of that bulk out. But I'm not going to cut it down to the seam, seam we sewed in a minute ago because I don't want to cut that out. So I've cut some of that bulk out by that. I'll take it back to the machine. You could have done that from the machine without taking it out, but I needed to take it out to get you to be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, I moved the camera so you can see a little bit better on the angle of where we're at now so you'll see this corner. So I'm gonna sew all the way to the corner. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna leave it just like that. get a little bit closer to the edge and I'm going to take this overlay piece and I'm going to fold it back and so there my corner meets so I'm going to sew it to where those pieces met lift up my foot and turn it then I'm going to put my foot back down and I'm going to sew down this side and we'll do the same thing in just a minute, I'll show you. I'm going to cut this bulk out before I get to it. And the string, I seem to have a lot of strings, threads today. got this piece hanging out over here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip it up and my corners right here should meet. 
Can you see that? So I'm going to take it and I'm going to sew down, leave my needle down, pick my foot up, turn it, put my presser foot back down, and go down this side. out at the corner. It just seems to lay flatter that way and not be so bulky. And I'll go to the end. I'm going to flip this piece up just like we did a minute ago. I'm going to sew all the way to the end with the needle down. I'm going to turn it. Put the foot back down go down this side. Got the bulk over here I'm going to cut out without cutting that seam. Go to the edge. Flip this one up like we did a minute ago. The needle down, turn it one more time. I'm going to stick any loose threads inside that binding. in a couple stitches and then I'm going to take it out and cut my threads and we now have let me move you out a little bit so you can see it the back and the front of our hot pad and now we can take a Pyrex dish and have one hot pad rather than two or three down below so I hope that helped on how to make a large hot pad. Come back and see us for the next video. Like and subscribe so that we can keep providing you with more videos. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.